Amen. The book of Acts chapter number 3. Acts chapter number 3. And we invite your attention to verses 1 through 8. The book of Acts chapter 3 and verses 1 through 8. Now read in our hearing from the King James Version of the Scripture. I want to talk about broke, broken, and begging. Bro broken and begging. Amen. Acts chapter 2 beginning with verse number 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, beating the night out. It says, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked arms. Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting, everybody say expecting, Amen. to receive something of them. Uh -huh. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then Peter, he took him by the right hand, took the man by the right hand, lifted him up. The Bible says, and immediately, everybody say immediately. immediately. His feet and ankle bones received strength. Then verse 8 says, and he leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Broke, broken, and begging. You know, as we drive by people on a daily basis, perhaps many of us do, who are on the street corner, uh, got their hand out, got a cup out, or whatever the case might be, and they are begging. And it's easy for us to pass by people, just turn our head and ignore them, and some of us may even think less of them than we ought to. Amen. Because for whatever reason, they find themselves in a situation where they are begging. Amen. Now on a normal basis, on a normal circumstance, I'm not one of those who give the people who are out on the streets begging. Amen. I give, and I freely give to a lot of people and to a lot of causes, but that's just something I generally don't do. And while we do understand that there are people out there, not, not only out there, but that's why I'm in the church, that act like something is wrong with them, that pretend like something is wrong with them, just in order to get somebody else's money. But there are people out there who have a legitimate need. There are people out there who really need help. And as I thought about it, when you look at a person standing out on the street corner begging, and I have to conclude that, that that person did not come to that decision very easily. Because when you stand out and beg, you really put yourself on display. You show your vulnerability. You show your weaknesses. You, you are open and bare to the public. So your situation has to be desperate for you to get out there in front of everybody and hold up a sign and, and ask people for money as they go about their daily business. I mean, there's something that's got to be going on in your life other than just being broke. How many of y'all know that's bad enough? Hey, hey, man. But, but when you look at this triple threat, when you look at someone who is not only broke, but they are broken. And then they are left to beg in order to make their way through life. I want to suggest to you that it's not an easy thing. I thank God I've never been in that position, but I can imagine that it's not an easy thing. As a matter of fact, some of us, we may not be homeless. We may not stand on the street corner, but we are still catching hell every day. And some of us will find our best to make it. We talk to our friends. We talk to our family. We go to the bank, and oftentimes they slam the door in our faces. 
So sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we are not only broke, but we are broken almost to the point but we are broken down. We have been reduced to nothing, we think. And here we are left with our only, in our mind, our only alternative is to beg. It's to beg. I, I don't know about you, but I don't even like asking people for anything. <laughs> You know, you know, because some of us we are so uh, independent, and 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 some we are so prideful that it's hard for us to what we think of as lower ourselves to ask somebody else for something. But I want you to understand something. I thank God that you're in a better position. I thank God that you're in a better situation. But I want you to understand something. Keep on living. There's always a chance that, that you might be the one that's out there begging. You don't ever know what the next day might hold. Yeah. While we look down, I know you that other people talk about them, whisper about them, and put them down. You don't ever know that you might find yourself in a similar situation. That's why I hope I can encourage you today to help people when you can help them pray for one another and thank God that things are as well with you as they are and understand that God bless you in order for you to be a blessing to somebody. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for how he blesses me. I thank God that I have gotten to a point in my life. I'm not all the way there, but, but I've got to a point where God can trust me with some stuff. Amen. I said, God can trust me with some stuff. He, he, he has got me to a level where he can trust me with some money. And he's got me to a point where he can trust me with some wisdom. And I thank God that whatever God gives me, I want you to understand, it is also available to you. on me after church in the parking lot or coming to my office, but I want you to understand that whatever God has given me, whatever wisdom he has endowed me with, whatever knowledge God has given me, whatever resources God has given me, is also available, not only to you, but whosoever will. And whosoever needs you ought to understand that God is good to you and you ought to be good to somebody else. I want you to get out of this state of mind of being selfish and self-centered and trying to hold on to everything because God bless you. Yeah. You can be a blessing to somebody else. When I, when I look at this man, don't even give his name. Just say a certain man. And it is a man who has been laid from his mother's womb. In other words, he has been a cripple from birth. I don't know what happened. I don't know how that came about. But, but this man, and I don't know exactly how old he is even right now. But, but this man, has he was born in a fix. Some of us can testify, it may not be that we were born lame, that we were crippled in our feet, but some of us were born in poverty. We were born with the odds stacked against us. We were born on the negative side. I don't think I could be, but I don't think I'm talking to anybody here today who were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. If you were, and I want you to understand some of your mama probably stepped in your mouth after you were born. But some of us were born into poverty, born into a family that was broke, born into a family perhaps that was also broken and big. And then it says that it says that, that that this man was taken to the temple. And I can't really think of a better place. And, and I've seen in big cities where people hang around churches. And, and we have it here where people come and go around our church. And they're looking for something. They're looking for a handout. But the truth of the matter is I can't think of a better place to go if you need something. <laughs> Amen. We try to direct them somewhere they can get more permanent assistance. But I tell you right now, if a person can't come to the church in order to get some help, where can they go? Where can they go if they can't come to people who are always talk about God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. If they can't come to the place where we lift up the name of Jesus and praise of his holy name, where can they go? I don't know too many more 
places where you find more Cadillacs and more businesses and more lessons than in the church parking lot. And if they can't come here and get some help, where can they go? And the Bible says that this man was caring. Yes. Every day. Somebody would pack him up and take him to the temple and drop him off. I don't have time to explore the entire scenario or possible scenario, but, but sometimes. People put you in a position not to help you, but to help them. Let me try it again. I said, sometimes people will exploit you when you can't help yourself, when you can't do for yourself. And they put you in a position to profit them. And every day they put them there to beg, to ask. For money, that money, as people came and went to the church and from the church and 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 used it. I don't know why. I don't know why anybody would be afraid of waiting on people to come out of church. I mean, I can understand if you have a church like First Baptist. I, I can understand because First Baptists believe in giving to the Lord. They believe in tithing. So if you won't get anything, you better get it before they come in here because by the time they leave, they broke too. But I don't understand what the problem is with most churches. Why are you trying to catch them before they go in? Because many of them, whatever they came in with, they're walking out with it. And he would stand and he would beg every day. And 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 and, and as I read and meditated on this scripture, I'm trying to see this man. I'm trying to, to feel this man. And I'm trying to understand his mindset and what's going on on the inside. This man was not only broke, but he was broken. And part of his brokenness could have been how his family and friends would bring him to the temple and drop him off to bed. Part of his brokenness had to be his situation, his circumstance. Part of his brokenness had to be his condition. Part of his brokenness had to be in the fact that we look at people as being disabled. Let me pause right there for a minute. Listen, be careful about calling people disabled. I, be, be careful about looking at yourself as being disabled. Because to be disabled means that you are unable, and when you are unable, you are totally dependent on somebody else. But I want you to understand something. You may have a walking disability where you can't walk, but you still ain't disabled. intellectual disability, you might have an emotional disability, but you ain't disabled, baby. There may be some things that you can't do, but thank God there are many other things that you can do. You may not be able to walk, but you can still think, you can still talk, you can still rationalize, you can still use your hands. You may not be able to do something, but thank God I can still, I ain't disabled. Which reminds me, reminds me of a news story that I saw maybe about a year or so ago where, where this man parked at a store in a what we call a, a handicap for disabled. And when the man parked and got out of the vehicle and, and began to walk towards the store, somebody confronted him and said, wait a minute. You ain't disabled. Amen. Why you park in that spot that's reserved for those who are handicapped? Amen. Can I help somebody out here this morning? Amen. All your disabilities don't show. Amen. Don't question me about my disability. It ain't what you think disability is supposed to be. You don't know what I got going on on the inside. walking on two legs but they might be two prosthetic legs. You don't know. And don't be approaching me about my disability. Because we got our own idea what, what, what uh, 
Somebody is supposed to be when they are disabled. Right. And, and, and it's not just them, sometimes it's you. Right. <laughs> I wish you hadn't decided to take a nap right then. But sometimes it ain't somebody else, it's you. Because sometimes, based on your condition and your circumstances, in your mind, you think, I ain't able. Somebody, I can still live, I can still walk, I can still talk, I can still think, I thank God for whatever I can do. We, we got this idea about what disability is, and sometimes we tag ourselves with disabled. Hopelessness. Amen. I'm helpless. I can't do for my. Yeah, you can do something. Amen. You can do something. Amen. Listen, every day that God wakes you up, make it a productive day. Amen. You know what? One of the things I pray when I pray to God, I say, thank you for giving me a safe day, a productive day, and a prosperous day. And when my work is done, give me a good night's rest and sleep. Wake me up in the morning on due time and start all over again. Give me another safe day, productive day, and a prosperous day. Amen. 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 Once, you, once you look at this situation, look at, look at this situation of, mm -hmm. of our circumstances. When you look at our circumstances, oftentimes we judge where we are and what we are based on our circumstances. When you look at our circumstances, I want to look at just these three words here. Circumstances, look at our circumstances. Our circumstances often cause our condition. And then oftentimes our condition leads to a complex. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm glad you asked because some, sometimes, depending on what our circumstances are, and you know, you hear people talk about, well, I'm doing well under the circumstances. And oftentimes, circumstance carries a negative connotation. Many times, when we use that word circumstance, we're really not talking about anything good. We usually talk about something bad, something negative, something that's painful, something that, that, that seems to be going against us. And, and even when people ask us how we're doing, we use that term again. I'm, I'm doing well under the circumstances. Can I help you change that just a little bit? Stop talking about you doing well under the circumstances. And just go ahead and tell somebody I'm doing well in spite of the circumstances. But when I wake up in the morning, I'm doing well. And I thank God that blood is still running warm in my body. Because what happens to us is, is our circumstances often cause our condition. So how do we find ourselves with a certain condition because of our circumstances? This, this man was in the condition that he was in because of his circumstances. Born... Lame from his mother's womb. And, and I want to suggest that, that the possibility was instead of helping this man through his circumstance, there were people who were exploiting him. And that even worsened his condition. Did this man have had, 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 had for who knows how many years had 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 to endure the, 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 the shame of standing or, or rather sitting outside the church yeah. begging as people went in the church. That's a terrible situation. Then you got people, they, they, they had to bring you. And, and then once they left you, you, you got to wait on them to come back and get you. Anybody here beside me know that ain't no fun? You know, I'm not even going to charge you for this one. But when somebody take you somewhere, and then they say, let me drop you off and I'll be right back. Don't let them do it. Don't do it. 
<laughs> Make them wait. I guarantee you, if you let them leave, you're going to be three hours later than you thought you were. Well, I just thought I'd run by and do this while you were in there. I just thought I'd go take care of that while you were in there. This man was left there and had to stay there until somebody came back. Yes. Listen, and then your, your condition mm -hmm. can lead to a complex. Yes, yes. Because whatever caused your condition, whatever the circumstances were, and sometimes it's just where people have rejected you. But it can cause a complex. And the complex is how you see yourself and how you feel about yourself. And oftentimes we call it an inferiority complex where we feel inferior to everybody else. I don't care if you fell out in the back of the fourth grade and you deal with a PhD. Let me tell you something, you still a woman and you still a man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because your manhood, your womanhood is not based on your education. And sometimes we feel left. Not only are we rejected, but sometimes we are dejected. We just feel terrible about who we are. Can you imagine what this man felt like every time they picked him up and take him home? How bad he felt. What he had had to endure the whole day. And we find ourselves with a complex. Listen, I'm going to tell you in a minute how to escape all that. But we find ourselves in, in this uh, situation, this, this uh, uh, circumstance that leads to our condition that could eventually lead to us having a complex. Yeah. Having a complex causes us to quit. Oh my Lord. Mm -hmm. To give up. Mm -hmm. To throw in the towel. To stop fighting. To stop trying. Because we don't feel like we can. Mm -hmm. not, it, it's not that just that. Because I'm talking about a person that is, that is broken. Not just broke, but it's broken emotionally and spiritually broken. And one of the worst things that you and I can do to a person is to break them, break their spirit. They've done that. Don't feel anything for themselves, about themselves. And it's not, listen, when you are broken, it's not just that you can't, you feel like you can't do. You're at a point where you don't even think you are worthy. Even if I could get you, but I, I don't deserve it. I ain't worthy. <laughs> and we stop trying. We stop pressing. We give up and eventually slump into depression. We give up on life. Develop that complex. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a lot of things could be wrong with us. Amen. But it ain't gonna stop me living. Amen. 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 You can talk about I'm overweight all you want to, but that ain't gonna stop me from living. Amen. You, you can talk about how great my hair is, how bald my head, I don't care. Amen. You can talk about how many teeth is out of the I do not care. I'm not gonna stop living. Talk about what kind of education I don't have, I don't care. I am going to live because my life is not based on stuff. My life is based on the Savior. How do you remedy it, Pastor? Let's, let's try to get out of here before 5 o'clock. How do you remedy it, Pastor? Well, how are we going to fix this? I'm going to give you some tea. I'm going to give you some tea, okay? T-E-A. I'm going to give you some tea, all right? Anybody ready for some tea? I ain't got no women, but I'll give you some tea. First of all, first of all, watch what Peter and John did. This man is out there asking them for money. And they said, Seven go have a none, but such as I have, give I thee. So what I saw was the first thing that Peter and John did was gave this man some tough 
That's your team. Love! I don't think you're feeling me yet. Well, what I'm saying is, they didn't give him what he wanted. They gave him what he needed. And sometimes you got to tell your child, your grandchild, your parent, no! That's not what you need. Sometimes you got to love people enough to not give them any money. Sometimes you got to express and show some tough love and make them sometimes you got to allow them to go through what they are going through. Sometimes you're going to be dealing with some, some people, you know how our children are. Yeah. Yeah. They're not only persistent, insistent, but they're all barren. <laughs> some of y'all ain't raised no children yet. <laughs> I'm talking they can be in your ear. Oh, let me ask you something. Are you strong enough to say no. When a person is begging you for a yes. When you know all they're going to do with the money is go and buy another bottle, buy another hit. You know that their pattern. You know it. That's why you can't give folk money every time they ask you. And, and sometimes they make it easier for you yeah? because they'll tell you, so don't be asking what I'm going to do with you. Are you going to give it to me or not? Because it ain't your business what I'm going to do with you. It ain't my business to give it to you. Thank you for making that so easy. I didn't even have to think about that. Do you know how to show tough love? Do you know how to say no to your child when they're begging you to say yes? You know that whatever you allow them to do is placing them in danger. You know yes, they got no business being with a certain crowd, or even with a certain individual. Yes. Do you love them enough to say no? Yes, you stand by your friend. It's not about being popular right. with your child or anybody else. But you got to learn how to say no. You got to learn to give people tough love. Yeah, exactly. Not just give them what they want, but give them what they need. Yeah. Secondly, I told you I was going to give you some tea. How do you spell tea? Tea. What? What's next? Tea. E. We have to encourage people. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right? That's not an <laughs> Sometimes all people need is a little encouragement. That's right. That's right. Tough, tough love, tough love. See we go, Heavenly Man. Such as we have to give us, we have given to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Encourage you right. I, I don't care about that. In the name of Jesus. Right. 
I said, in the name of Jesus. But you don't understand. We ain't got this. We ain't got that. My mother ain't got this. My daddy ain't got that. I do not care in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible tells us that there is a name that is above every name. And it's at that name that every knee must bow, every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord above all. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's power. That's enablement. That's going from cake to can. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Sometimes that's all that's needed. Love and courage. Try to say start to T. What? A. And what? A. A. Oftentimes, prayer or even encouragement is not enough. There are times that our prayers must sprout wings, must grow legs, hands. That our prayers, that's all well and good. But let me help you out. Generally, when we pray, we're asking God to do. God, you do this. You come. You may. You do this. You do that. What's wrong with your hands? What's wrong with your feet? Watch what Peter and John did. Tough love. We ain't giving you no money, bro. Tough love. But then it's, we will encourage you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Come on, you can do it, man. Come on, you can do it. But then I also realize you may need, what was that, eight? Eight. Assistance. All right, all right, all right. You didn't see it right there. Reach down to him. Grab him by the hand and help him up. And the Bible says it did not happen when they showed him tough love. It did not happen when they encouraged him. But when they reached, grabbed him by the hand, assisted him up. Then the Bible says, I think I'm still in the Bible. Then the Bible says, Immediately, his feet, his ankles gained strength, and he stood, and he leaped, and he went with them in the temple, jumping for joy and praising God. Because they assisted him. You know, it's easy for us to tell somebody, oh, you'll get over it. Or you'll be okay. Or you'll get through it. You know, we just flip them off and stuff like that. I'll be praying for you. You ain't prayed yet. Sometimes, my friends, you have to press the flesh. Sometimes you have to reach down and help them up. Not just show them tough love, not just encourage them. But sometimes you got to you got to show them what you said is true. If you told them that they could do it, then you got to show them that they can do it. Because if they had believed they could do it, they would have done it before now. Amen. Amen. Bible says he they reached down and grabbed the man by the hand and pulled him up, and he received strength. Yes, sir. In his feet and in his ankles, in his legs. The man didn't sit there arguing with him, wait a minute now, you know, I've been like this for a long time. Can I just tell you something? I've been in some situations and some conditions that I have been in for a long time. Yeah. But when God moved immediately. of God can move in your life 
and turn that thing around just like that. If I do it, I may have to do that, but God can do it right now. Yeah. I don't think you've heard me. I don't know where you are. I don't know what kind of fit you're in. I don't know what your condition is. I don't know what kind of complex you've got, but God can do it right now. He can turn around right now. He can stand you up right now. He can open your eyes and you can see right now. God can put walking in your legs right now. He can put speaking in your tongue right now. He can put breath in your lungs right now. So, if you stand on your feet, and you can help somebody else with that, you know, you, you ain't got to get lifted. <laughs> but when you find somebody in a situation like that, broken, broken, Begging, offer them some tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me, I, I got some tea that I think will help you. All right. All right. Give a tough love. Yeah. Tough love is when you really love. Yeah. When you're not just trying to yeah. win their favor. Yeah. When you're not just trying to stay in good with them. Tough lovers when you do what's best for them, even when that's not what they ask for or what that's not what they want. Yeah, yeah. Tough love and encouragement. Encouragement. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you just got to embrace them and help them up. Trust God. Hey, you got to move. You're here right now. Gracious God, we bless you. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. God, as I pray, if there's one in I miss, Lord, who's out of the ark of safety, that you would touch, that you would speak, that they might move before it's everlasting too late. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor in heaven, labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. By me, you roll in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. If that's one that the doors of church are open, if you're here today, you can come.
going to do over there. Amen. Let's prepare as we remain standing. Please let's prepare to bring our tithes and our offerings. And I give some love to the Lord. Anyone need an envelope?